Hello, I'm Mike, and today I'm going to show you how to debug Node.js code. Node.js is a JavaScript runtime based on the same V8 engine used in Google Chrome's browser. It is often used to build cross-platform server-side and terminal applications. Node.js has become increasingly popular over the past decade because it's easy to install, practical to use, fast, and allows client-side web developers to leverage their skills elsewhere. However, software development remains a complex task and your Node.js code will fail at some point. This video demonstrates various tools to help debug applications and find the cause of a problem. But before we get too far, I want to let you know that there'll be links to more resources in the video's description below. And remember, subscribe and ring that bell to get notifications for future helpful content. Now, let's look at some debugging tools. Environment variables set in the host operating system can control Node.js application and module settings. The most common is Node ENV, which usually is set to develop when debugging or production is running on a live server. Set environment variables on Mac OS or Linux with this command. In the popular Express.js framework, setting Node ENV to development disables template file caching and outputs verbose error messages, which could be helpful when debugging. Other modules may offer similar features, and you can add a Node ENV condition to your applications, for example. You can also use Node's util debug log method to conditionally output error messages, for example. Node scripts are typically launched with Node followed by the name of the entry script. You can also set the command line options to control various runtime aspects. Check out these useful flags for debugging. Outputting a console message is one of the simplest ways to debug a Node.js application. Few developers realize there are many other console methods. Console log also accepts a list of comma-separated values. Although ES6 destructuring offers similar output with less effort. The console directory command prints object properties in the same way as utility inspect. Some developers claim you should never use console.log because you're changing code and may alter something or forget to remove it, and there's no need when there are better debugging options. Don't believe anyone who claims they've never used console.log. Logging is quick and dirty, but everyone uses it at some point. Use whatever tool or technique you prefer. Fissing a bug is more important than the method you adopt to find it. Third-party logging systems provide more sophisticated features such as messaging levels, verbosity, sorting, file output, profiling, reporting, and more. Popular solutions include Cabin, Log Level, Morgan, Pino, Signal, Storyboard, Tracer, and Winston. The V8 JavaScript engine provides a debugging client which you can use in Node.js. Start an application using Node Inspect, for example. The debugger pauses at the first line and displays a debug prompt. Enter help to view a list of commands, and you can step through the application by entering these commands. Admittedly, this debugging option is time consuming and difficult. Only use it when there's no other option, like when you're running code on a remote server and cannot connect from elsewhere, or you're installing additional software. The node.js inspect option used earlier starts a WebSocket server that listens on localhost port 9229. It also starts a text-based debugging client, but it's possible to use graphical clients such as the one built into Google Chrome and Chrome-based browsers like Chromium, Edge, Opera, Vivaldi, and Brave. To debug a typical web application, start with the inspect option to enable the V8 debugger's WebSocket server. And remember, index.js is presumed to be the application's entry script. Ensure you use inspect with double dashes to ensure you don't start the text-based debugger client. You can use node daemon instead of node if you want to auto-restart the application when a file is changed. By default, the debugger will only accept incoming connections from the local machine. If you're running the application on another device, virtual machine, or Docker container, use this. 
You can also use inspect break instead of inspect to halt processing on the first line so you can step through the code from the start. Open a Chrome-based browser and enter Chrome inspect into the address bar to view local and network devices. If your Node.js application does not appear as a remote target, either click open dedicated dev tools for Node and choose the address and port, or check discover network targets. Click configure and then add the IP address and the port of the device where it's running. Click the targets inspect link to launch the dev tools debugger client. This should be familiar to anyone who's used DevTools for client-side code debugging. Switch to the Sources panel. You can open any file by hitting Command, Control, plus P, and entering its file name. However, it's easier to add your project folder to the workspace. This allows you to load, edit, and save files directly from DevTools. Number one, click Add Folder to Workspace. Number two, select the location of your Node.js project. Number three, hit Agree to Permit File Changes. You can now load files from the left-hand directory tree. Click any number to set a breakpoint denoted by a blue marker. Debugging is based on breakpoints. These specify where the debugger should pause program execution and show the current state of the program. You can define any number of breakpoints in the user interface. Another option is to place a debugger statement into your code, which stops when a debugger is attached. Load and use your web application to reach the statement where a breakpoint is set. In the example here, localhost 3000 is opened in any browser and DevTools will halt execution on line 44. The right-hand panel shows a row of action icons. A watch pane allows you to monitor variables by clicking the plus icon and entering their names. A breakpoints pane shows a list of all breakpoints and allows them to be enabled or disabled. A scope pane shows you the state of all local, module, and global variables. You will inspect this pane most often. A call stack pane shows the hierarchy of functions called to reach this point. A row of action icons is shown above paused on breakpoint. From left to right, these perform the following actions. Sometimes it's necessary to wield a little more control over breakpoints. Imagine you have a loop that completed 1,000 iterations, but you're only interested in the state of the last one. Rather than clicking resume execution 999 times, you can right click the line, choose add conditional breakpoint, and enter conditions such as I equals 999. Chrome shows conditional breakpoints in yellow rather than blue. In this case, the breakpoint is only triggered on the last iteration of the loop. Log points effectively implement console.log without any code. An expression can be output when the code executes any line, but it does not halt processing, unlike a breakpoint. To add a log point, right-click any line, choose Add Log Point, and enter an expression. VS Code or Visual Studio Code is a free code editor for Microsoft that became popular with web developers. The application is available for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, and is developed using web technologies in the Electron framework. VS Code supports Node.js and has a built-in debugging client. Most applications can be debugged without any configuration. The editor will automatically start the debugging server and client. Open the starting file, such as index.js, activate the run and debug pane, click the run and debug button, and choose the node.js environment. Click any line to activate a breakpoint shown as a red circle icon. Then, open the application in a browser. VS Code halts execution when the breakpoint is reached. The variables watch, call stack, and breakpoints panes are similar to those shown in Chrome DevTools. The loaded scripts pane shows which scripts have been loaded, although many are internal to Node.js. Here's what the toolbar of action icons allows. Like Chrome DevTools, you can right-click on any line to add conditional breakpoints and log points. Further VS Code configuration may be necessary if you want to debug code on another device, a virtual machine, or need to use alternative launch options such as no daemon. VS Code stores debugging configurations in a launch.json file inside a VS Code directory in your project. Open the run and debug pane. Click create a launch.json file and choose the node.js environment to generate this file. An example configuration is provided. Any number of configuration settings can be defined as objects in the configurations array. Click Add Configuration and select an appropriate option. 
An individual Node.js configuration can either launch a process itself or attach to a debugging WebSocket server, perhaps running on a remote machine or docket container. For example, to define a node daemon configuration, select node.js, node daemon setup, and change the program entry script if necessary. Save the launch.json file, and node daemon appears in the drop down list at the top of the run and debug pane. Click the green run icon to start using that configuration and launch the application using no daemon. As mentioned before, you can add breakpoints, conditional breakpoints, and log points. The main difference is that no daemon will automatically restart your server when a file is modified. Once your application is live, you could consider using commercial debugging services such as LogRocket and Sentry.io, which can record and playback client and server errors encountered by real users. What Node.js debugging practice do you swear by? Share in the comment section below. Are you looking for a quality local development solution? With DevKinsta and a single click, you can design, develop, and deploy new WordPress projects from your local machine. Plus, it's 100% free to use, even if you aren't a Kinsta user. Download it today at kinsta.com slash devkinsta. And thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more tutorials, explainers, and helpful content like this.